Okay, so I'm just going to try to answer some of your questions here to try to get through the circle unit. I just put a problem together. Obviously, the circle he drew isn't that great. But the key here is that the chords inside the circle do not go through the center. Remember, if they go through the center, then the arcs, the minor arcs, are going to be equal to the central angle. Uh, in this case, the, the point E is not the center. So the rule is that, you know, this 83-degree angle we know that the one next to it is 97 and we know that the vertical angle is 83. Now I'm also given, I just made up this problem, that the measure of arc DC is 150. Okay, So I know that this is also 97 degrees, vertical angles. So if I want to find this missing angle, the measure of arc AB, it's going to be 150 plus that arc, half of it is going to be equal to the angle inside. That's the formula from section 10.5 you need to follow. And then if I multiply both sides by 2 and subtract 150, you will get that the, ang the arc is 44 degrees up here. And then you can subtract from 360 if you want to to find the arc AD, but you can also use... Um, the uh, same formula with the 83 degree angle. Uh, the 83 degree angle is going to be one half of the two arcs. So in this case I know it's a 52 and I don't know the measure of arc AD. Multiply both sides by 2 and subtract and I will get that the arc is 114 degrees. So this is the one key part of the 10.5 section that I want you to know. All right. The next section, also in 10.5, is when you have an angle that is outside the uh, circle. Again, I drew a pretty good circle here, a little bit better. Uh, let me move this up a little bit. Okay, And if I know that this arc is 62, and I know that this little guy, arc BE, is 20, I can subtract them and take half of it, and that would give me the angle outside. So just follow along with the letters and you can figure that out. So that's the key here. So if they give you the angle, you can just subtract inside to find the missing arcs. Okay, The bigger arc minus the little arc, half of it is going to be the angle outside. So that's going to help you with 10.5. 10.7 deals with um, a standard form of an equation of a circle, which you do have to memorize, okay, and that's this formula right here. So this would imply that your center is going to be h comma k, and your radius is going to be the square root of the r squared. If my coordinate is positive, it's going to be a minus sign, and if my coordinate is negative, it's going to be a plus sign. So if I look at this example, if I have a circle with center 2 comma negative 4 and a radius of 5, I know that 5 squared is 25, and I know that the formula inside would be x minus 2 squared, because 2 is a positive number, and y plus 4 squared, because negative 4 is the y coordinate. So you just got to keep that in mind for these problems. So that's pretty easy with circles. Drawing them, you would just count blocks on your graph paper. I'm not as concerned about that as I am on the formula. Sometimes your circle equations are not written in this easy form. And I'll give you an example. I believe it's number 17 on page 579. It's one of your homework problems. You see how the equation is written with x squared plus a y squared, and then you have the x and the y separate and a number outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a process that you'll learn now, but it's also very important in Algebra 2. It's called completion of the square. The setup is I'm going to put the x's together. So the x squared and then the minus 8x, and I'm going to have a little space, and then the y squared minus the 2y with a little space, and then the number negative 16 is already over there, and I'm going to add two spaces to the uh, right side of the equation. So that's my setup. That's my step one. My step two is the key. And that's very simply, 
Uh, I'm going to take half of the x coordinate, the variable in front of the x, I'm going to take half of it. So mentally, half of negative 8 is 4, and then I'm going to square it. So I'm going to put 16. So negative 4 squared is a positive 16, remember. And then half of negative 2 is negative 1, but negative 1 squared is a positive 1. So it's always a plus sign. And then I'm going to add the two numbers that I found in the left side of the equation also to the right side. I'm adding the same thing to both sides of the equation. It doesn't change anything. So that's why there's another 16 and a 1 over here. Then I'm going to simplify. And the key to that is, is I've already created a perfect square trinomial. And x squared minus 8x plus 16 is a quadratic that I can factor to x minus 4 squared. It's a perfect square trinomial. Plus plus y squared minus 2y plus 1 is a perfect square trinomial to y minus 1 squared. And then I add negative 16 plus 16 plus 1 and I get 1. And you see now I have the equation in something that I can work with. Because from here I know that the center is now 4 comma 1 and the radius is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So that's kind of what I want you to do for the homework and to help you get through the uh, review assignment that's due tomorrow. All right? Hopefully this helps.